All right, praise the Lord. Enough announcements. <sighs> Who made a resolution this year in 2020? Come on, let me see your hands if you made a resolution this year in 2020. How many of you still need to make a resolution? How many of you guys' resolution was to make better decisions in 2020? Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Or to make a decision, I'm going to make decisions in 2020. Okay. So listen, every year people make resolutions for the new year. Okay. We've all done them before, and I think they're great. I think having goals set in mind are awesome. I think having resolutions to, to kickstart um, something you say, no, this is the year I'm going to do it, then by all means, go for it. All right? I want you to set goals, and I want you to set this. Now, every year at the church, we talk about what we feel what God is speaking to us for the year. What is God speaking over our church and over our region and community and our body? But um, coming back to resolutions, we, we've all done them before. So I'm going to tell you the top 10 resolutions for every year so far. These are top 10 all the time resolutions. Starting with number 10, to drink alcohol less. How many of you, that's your resolution? Thank you, Pastor Steve. <laughs> I just want to see you raise your hand. Pray for you. No. To volunteer. That's number nine. Number eight, be less stressed. I don't know how you can resolve to be less stressed. You just, huh? You want me to keep going? Number seven. Oh, <laughs> number seven, travel to new places. Number six, spend more time with family. Number five, get out of debt and save money. Number four, eat healthier and diet. Number three, learn something new. Number two, who wants to take a stab at it? Huh? Close. Find a significant other. Find a other? No. <laughs> Quit smoking. That's number two. And quit smoking. And then number one is lose weight and get fit. All right? Now, those are the top ten of all times. So every year, somebody's resolving to do one of those things. And I think resolutions, like I said, are great. I think we should all have them. I think we should all accomplish them. However, when it comes to New Year's resolutions, everyone has the tendency to not accomplish them or to pull them off. You know what I'm talking about? We start off really great, but then as it goes on, it's kind of like, oh, man, I, that cookie looks really inviting. <laughs> Leftover Christmas cookies still in your house. Somebody told me one time uh, this statement, and it stuck with me forever, if it's in your house, you'll eat it, right? And I just thought, man, that just makes sense. And so, you know, um, um, I had this T-shirt. Um, I think I still might have it. Um, you guys know the Nike, the, 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 the Nike uh, uh, slogan? What, what is that? Just do it? I had a t-shirt that said, just do it tomorrow. <laughs> it was awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, um, I, I, it's, so, it's so great, you know. Um, and, and as a church, um, as a church, we, we, we have goals and we have uh, missions and we have all these things that we're, that we're going after and what we're doing, you know. But when we live towards something in our own strength, we will most likely run out of gas in our own strength. Right. I'm not saying you can't do it. Right, and, and to be honest with you, some of us just need a, to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, look in the mirror, and just make a decision that we're going to do something this year. Right? Maybe, maybe you made something last year and you didn't accomplish it. Guess what? It doesn't stop. You can still do it this year, right? You can still do it this year. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and just say, you know what, Jake? This is the year we're going to do what we have tasked ourselves to do. And then you've got to just do it, not just do it tomorrow. You've got to just do it. Resolutions are something that we forecast and we say, this is what we're going to do in our own, own strength. However, this morning, what I want to talk to you about is a revelation. Here at the church, what we do, we don't call them New Year's resolutions. We call them New Year's revelations. New Year's revelations. We've done this ever since 2015. Does anybody remember? All those who've been here that long, we had lived the promise, right? Last year's uh, revelation was what? Does anybody remember? Strong, right? Strong people, strong family, strong church. And little did we know as the year played out, the way that you become strong and gain strength in your spiritual walk with God are when things come your way that don't really, that really penetrate and they really make it difficult for you to live for God. Yeah. To doubt your faith. 
That's how you become strong in Christ is when you're challenged. God is so good at, at, at rubbing iron against our iron to make it sharp, isn't he? And some people want to blame God and some people want to say, oh, God, I can't believe you did this. However, God's not asking us to blame him or to put the, put, put the result on him. What he's asking us to do is to grow in it. It's to grow in it. And let's just face it, some of us last year in 2019 had some incidents happen in our life that we had to make some decisions in our, in our hearts and in ourselves to say, I'm not going to doubt God, but I'm going to move forward in him. Right. Who's with me? Yeah. See, revelation, what happens with the revelation is it comes from within you. It's something that God plants deep down in your heart, and then it begins to nurture and it begins to grow. So that way you live from a place rather than towards a place. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's a difference between living from somewhere and in some place and something than living towards something. When God begins to do a work in your life, then it becomes real to you and then you begin to walk out as God is speaking to you. See, and here at River of Life Church, we're focusing on these New Year's revelations and we want to live from something, not just towards, towards it or to strive for it. We want this revelation to become who we are, who we are. The essence of who we are as a church, who we are as a body, not just something we say that we are in theory, but who we are. And to be honest with you, it's a total mind shift. It's a transformation on the way we think. For instance, this morning, if you think you'll never be a loving person, guess what? Then you probably won't be. Look to your friend next to you and say, I love you. There, you're a loving person. If you think to yourself that you'll always be status quo and your life will never get better, guess what? It probably won't get better. It's a total mind shift in the way we have to think about what God is speaking from us and to us. If you think that you'll always live in fear and always be depressed and always be stressed, guess what? You probably will always be and live in fear and always be stressed out and always be anxious. If you think there's no way out, of your situation, more than likely there probably won't be. Because when you live from a revelation, God begins to change the perspective in your mind. He begins to change your perspective on what he's speaking to you. That way you get to shape and form into what it is that he's speaking to you and what he's speaking that he sees you at. You see, his reality is much better than your reality. Come on, somebody. His reality is much deeper than your reality. What you live right now is actually just this blanket surface. It may seem real to you, but let me tell you, God is speaking something completely different to you than what you're facing right now. The question is, are we tuning our ear to what he has to say? See, I can't afford to have a thought in my mind that's not in his mind. I can't afford to have a thought in my mind that's not in his mind about me. I can't afford it. I can't do it anymore. So how does that, how does that speak to you this morning? When that's said, do you look at yourself and say, I'm this way, I'm that way? Are you, will you begin to this year, 2020, begin to see yourself the way that God sees you and not just see yourself, begin to live accordingly to the way that God sees you? See, and that is what the revelation is, especially the revelation of Christ in you. The revelation of Christ in you is simply this. You believing and living the way that Christ sees you and how he lives inside of you. Now I'm going to switch gears here and talk to you a little bit about what God has been speaking to my heart for 2020. In 2019, the Lord began to burn this word in my heart for 2020. In February of 2019, to be honest with you, February 2019, this New Year's revelation for our church in 2020 began to burn within me. And I believe that our church is shifting. Come on, somebody, hear me out. I believe that our church is shifting and rounding a corner, and we're ready to see a revival of souls come to know who the King Jesus is. Who wants that? I want that. It just means we're going to have to transform the way we think just means we're going to have to shift the way we think. This is not a club for you to come to. 
This is not something where we can just come and just be happy, happy with each other. Praise God we get to do that. I'm not negating that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. I believe that we should be the happiest people on the face of this planet. And I believe that we should love each other. I believe we should get together with each other. But make no mistake about it, this church is a place for people who do not think like us, who do not believe like us. And our job as believers is to simply introduce them to a new life in Christ. That's who we are. So, with that said, I want to show you this video, video of the New Year's revelation for 2020. Let me start with the story. February 2019, the Lord gave me a dream. In this dream, I was in a black space. There were no walls, no structure, but I was standing on a foundation. As I was walking around trying to feel my way out, I heard a whisper in the darkness say the word salvation. The whisper caught my attention. I tried to locate where the voice was coming from, but I could not find it. But I knew someone was in the room with me. As I continued to search, the same voice spoke out, but this time with more of an urgent tone. The voice rumbled, salvation. Again, this time, a little more alarming. I searched with the same tone and urgency, but to no avail, I could not find the voice. I walked around the dark space looking for the voice, and again, as I was searching, I was stopped in my tracks. The voice with a loud boom declared salvation, but this time was a little bit different. The word appeared in the dark space illuminating the area with big bright letters that spelled salvation. The voice was so loud that it felt that someone had taken the house and shook it. The shaking of the house was the likes of lightning and thunder hitting your home. Literally, the house shook, but it was calm outside. I instantly woke up and knew that I had just encountered the Lord. I immediately began asking the Lord, what does this mean? He spoke to me with a gentle whisper, 2020 will be the year of salvation. As the year unfolded and the plan became clearer of the mission of the kingdom advancement in our church and community, I believe the Lord is opening a doorway for us to be influential in salvation for 2020. We are praying and believing that those who do not yet know and for those who have known yet fall in the way, that 2020 will be the year the Lord will bring them back to His loving arms. River of Life Church, get ready. 2020 will be the year of salvation. I remember that dream like it was yesterday, and it was in February of 2019. During that month, I got a concussion because I slipped on the ice. I had a wisdom tooth taken out, and you know me, I hate the dentist. I would much rather, uh, no, wait, hold on. No, let me say this, let me say this. I'm going to say it. There's one thing that I dislike worse than the dentist, and that's the DMV. And... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just saying, right? So, and, and I, it was that month that it just seemed like everything was going bad. Have you guys ever had one of those months before? It's like, man, this is awful. I got sick. I had the stomach flu. I just, the whole month was just awful. I remember we had our comedian um, that night, and I had to leave early because I just got so sick. I couldn't even be here uh, for, the, for the outreach event in February. It was just, it was an awful month for me, and I remember sleeping in the Lord waking me up in the middle of my dream. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was walking around this dark room. I couldn't find anything. And I heard whispers, salvation, salvation, salvation. And then it just spoke salvation. I was like, God, where is this? I'm trying to find it. And then all of a sudden it was like salvation a little bit louder. Boom. And then the third time I was walking around looking for it. And the third time the word appeared out of nowhere, boom, salvation. Like really loud. When the voice spoke the, sorry about that. When the voice spoke the third time, right, salvation, it was like the house shook. Literally, like the house shook. I felt like lightning and thunder. You guys know what I'm talking about when lightning and thunder strike? It was like that, boom. And I went, huh. And it, and it, like, it like gripped me. And I thought, we just, like something just ran into our house. That's what it felt like. I woke up, there's nothing going on in my house, peaceful as all get out. And I knew that I just hadn't encountered the Lord. Like I knew that God was speaking to me. And I said, Holy Spirit, what does this mean? What does this mean? He says, Jake, get ready. 2020 will be the year of salvation. I was like, all right, Father. 
That's super cool. Now, with that said, the next day I called my mother-in-law. And I said, Deb, I had a dream last night. I need you to help me interpret this a little bit. And let me just say this about this. I want to encourage you and challenge you to trust in the supernatural God that we serve. Amen. Interpret a dream? What are you talking about? That's for voodoo dolls. <laughs> no, it's not. If it's in the word, then it should be for us today. Amen? Amen? So I called her and I said, what does this mean? And then we began to talk a little bit. She invited me to a prayer group that she had going on at that time on the first Wednesdays of the month. I said, all right, cool. So she asked me to come in and explain it to her in February. So I want you to know something, that since February of 2019, this word, Salvation 2020, has been bathing in prayer. Yeah. It's been soaking and marinating. And then as the, as the, as the year went on, Right as the year went on, I, I, I brought it to a Sunday night prayer group, which, by the way, is for everyone. Every Sunday night at 6.30 p.m., unless we say so, everyone's invited to come to prayer. It's for one hour from 6.30 to 7.30, and I encourage you to make that one of your resolutions. And so I, I, I just begin to speak it out, right, in prayer. And that was about midsummer. So now we've got... We've got a group of ladies praying. Now we've got the prayer team praying every Sunday night for this word, Salvation 2020. I was so excited when December came. Got all the Christmas stuff out of the way. We love you. Yes, amen. Ho, ho, ho. Everything was great, right? I'm ready for this day. Why? Because I believe that the people that you've been believing and praying for to get saved and come to know who Jesus Christ is in a very real and profound way, this is the year that God's going to bring them. God's going to bring them. Now, if you've been in church for a long time, you've probably heard that said for a long time. The prodigals are coming back. People are coming back. But I want you to know something, that we have been saturating this word in prayer for the whole year, almost the whole year of 2019, getting ready to see God bust out in salvation in 2020. Amen. How many have a loved one that you, wanna, you want them to see who Christ is? How many has got a coworker? who says, man, I wish that they would just know who Jesus is, right? You got someone in your life, may, maybe a son or a daughter or maybe a, a, an aunt or an uncle or, or somebody like that who once was on fire for the Lord, who once knew who Christ was, but yet something happened in the church and they've been estranged from God for a long time. God says, this is the year I want to bring it back because this is the year of salvation, this is the year that God is going to begin to do some work. Also with the word salvation is simply this. That I believe that this will be the year, 2020, where you've been believing God to save you from some things in your life. Some things in your life, addictions, marital issues, problems going on that no one else knows about, insecurities. I believe God's going to pull you out and save you. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, which, by the way, is our theme verse for the year. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, which I think is funny. All we're doing is missing a zero in that. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, says, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So what does salvation really mean? Salvation comes down to more than just snatching a soul from, from hell. Yes, that's what it means. But it also means identity, who you are in Christ. Who are you in him? Who are you in him? See, when we go through the progression, Christ was born, correct? Then he lived... He was in ministry, then he died on the cross, then he rose again on the third day. When he rose again on the third day, days later he came to the disciples and he commissioned us. He commissioned them, which is in Matthew chapter 28 and on. And then he commissioned us to say, now go and be like me to the world. 
He said, go raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the, do all those things. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do all of those things like I did while I was here on earth. He commissioned us to be like him, to be a reflection of who Christ is here on this earth. See, the Bible says, like Christ, that my flesh, my agenda, my ideas, my sinful nature, my wants, my desires, my fill in the blank has all been placed on the cross with him. And it was nothing that you did, but it was everything that he accomplished for us. He did that for us. See, when we come to, come to him and recognize that we needed a savior, we believe that he is Lord, something happened to us. Listen to me. Because this is what salvation did for us. It's more than just pick, punching your ticket for eternity. Thank God I get to live in heaven, amen? Thank God that I can confidently say this, this, uh, this morning. If an incident happened like it did in Texas not too long ago, and something were to happen to me today, I could confidently say that today I would be with Jesus in heaven. Well, you don't know that, Pastor Jake. No one really knows. No, I know. I know why, because the cross said so. No, 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 I don't think you just heard what I said. You want to walk around with confidence in Christ, and you got to know who you are in Christ. You want, you want to walk around with something that says, you know what, nothing's going to tear me down, then you better start learning, then we better start learning what it means to identify with who Christ is. That's what that really means. Something happened to us. When we came to Jesus, what he did is he cut away the sinful nature, like a bad disease. He just cut that sucker out, boom, and he did away with it. The Bible calls it circumcision of the heart. He cut away with it, whack. It's all nice and gone now. Now, he says, behold, all things have passed away, and everything now becomes new, is what the Bible says. Everything now becomes new. But what we have in churches across America today are Christians and believers walking around still under bondage because they don't identify with who Christ is. I will always be this person who's always depressed all the time. It is how my mama was. It's how my granddad was. So therefore, that's how I'm going to be. Let me tell you, sir or madam, that is not who you are. I'll always be addicted. No, you're not. I'll always be depressed. No, you're not. Why? Because the Christ has cut away that part of your life. That's not who you are. It's not who I am. I'm not saying you're not going to struggle with stuff. Come on, let's get real. Of course you're going to struggle with stuff. It's part of the believer's life. I believe, I honestly do believe this, that every believer should constantly walk in victory and freedom sprinkled with hardships. Why? It's because those hardships who test what God has done in our lives. It's those things that verify who we are in Christ. verifies, it identifies, I am his and he is mine. Whew, I just want to slap the devil in the face right now. <laughs> Got people still walking around thinking they're sinners. Give me a break. Stop thinking you're a sinner. If you are here today, and you know who Jesus Christ is, and you had an encounter with him, and you asked him into your life, and you're following him, you are no longer a sinner. Amen. Cut out, done with, over. According to the gospel, you are perfected in him. Well, you mean I'm perfect? You mean I'm perfect? I'm not saying you don't make bad choices from time to time, but the blood calls you perfect in him. Pastor Jake, how can you say that? I'm not perfect, but then change your mind. Or another word, repent. And start thinking like Christ thinks about you. Start thinking like that. Ooh, Jesus. Can you feel that? When we don't think and feel and believe the way that Christ believes in us and sees us. We 
and don't believe that. It's almost like we've looked at the cross and says, the cross was good for a Sunday, but it's never good enough for me for Monday. The cross was a great experience at church, but it's not a great experience for me on Tuesday. The cross, what we're saying is the cross has no power for me over the week, only on Sunday. Let me just encourage you with something. All of your XYZ baggage, whatever that is, if you choose to bring it to the cross, God says, I'll take all your burdens and your cares and you will become new. But I think a lot of the times we like to carry our baggage because we want to identify more with our baggage more than we want to identify with Christ. We want to identify more with what we think about ourselves and the stuff that we're going through rather than identifying with how Christ sees us and what he says about us. See, a lot of people are quick to point out sin. You've seen it before. I was in Chicago this last week, and they had people standing on every corner. Hey, you're going to hell, everybody. Like they're selling peanuts. Going to hell. And I, listen, I, I, I give them grace for that kind of stuff because it's like at least they're doing something, right? I, I don't ever get upset or mad about it. I just go, man, but that's not, that's not a representation of the God of love that I serve, right? And you're going to hell, yeah, da, 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 da. if you do this and you're going to hell. And, I, and there's truth to all those things. I understand that. And I just think to myself that people are quick to point out sin. They're quick to point out this kind of stuff. But what about the things that you deal with, that we deal with on a constant day-to-day -day basis that we've grown comfortable with that identifies with who we are? I'm just too scared to talk to somebody about Christ. I'm too afraid. I'm, 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 too, I'm too afraid to, to share Jesus or pray with somebody at work on my lunch break. I, I'm just too afraid. Do you realize that Christ did not die on the cross, suffer that horrific death, raised on the third day so you can be afraid here on this earth? That's not who you are. Whatever the case is that we identify with, no, I'm just, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm anxious. I'm not dogging anxiety. That's not what I'm saying. But when it becomes your identity, then we need to figure something out. Then we need to come to the cross. Then we need to ask Jesus, what causes my anxiety? And then let him take care of it and let him fix it. Stop identifying, right? Stop identifying with the things that are not of God and start identifying with the things that Jesus paid for on the cross. That's what matters. See, the gospel and salvation does more for you than just punch a ticket to eternity. It gives you life. And according to John chapter 4, it gives you life to the fullest. Now, having life to the fullest doesn't mean that you get to ride around in a Beamer, a Lambo, a Lambo. Isn't that how they say it nowadays? Or the new thing now, a Tesla truck with broken windows. I want you to have those things. Listen to me. You got to hear me. But having life to the fullest doesn't mean you get to have all the stuff to make you feel, make you full. Having life to the fullest is finding yourself in Christ first. Yeah. Finding your identity and who he says that you are. Yeah. That's life to the fullest. You can have all the stuff, and I hope you do. Because if you get a Lambo, and you get one, and you get this, and you get the, okay, whatever we want to do. If you get all those stuff, if you get all that stuff, that means the church is prospering. Hallelujah, praise God, we're going to pay off the building, everything's great. Yes. That's what that means. I want you to have all that stuff. But do not identify the full life with the things that you own. Identify your full life with who Christ says that you are. Amen. That's what matters, because the cross has said it all. Being confident in that. It's the reason why that I can stand up here today on January 5th, 2020, and say, if I die today, I'm going to heaven. Why? Because I know who I am in Christ. It's the reason why that I can stand up here today and say, that when I pray for you, I believe God is going to heal you. Amen. And you know, here's the thing. I'm just Jake. 
like you're just Jim and you're Jill and you're Bob and blah, blah, blah. There's no difference between any of us. We're all together in the same ship rowing together, right? You and I can have the same confidence that Christ has confidence in us. That's the greatest lesson that I've learned, to be honest with you. And then I'm moving on because I'm just about done. Kaylin, if you can come back. It's the greatest lesson that I've learned. When I had my kidney transplant almost 11 years ago, 11 years ago, you guys didn't even know I existed 11 years ago, but I was, I existed, I promise. <laughs> Here I was going through this situation and I kept asking God, God, why is this happening to me? You ever dealt with that before? Come on, be honest. You ever dealt with the questions of why? Why, God, am I going through this? Why is this taking place? Why does my son or daughter continue to have this thing? Why does this keep happening financially? Why does this kind of stuff happen? Why, God, why, God? It feels like I'm doing all the right things. I'm praying for people, and literally right in front of me, they're getting healed, but I'm still sick even while I'm praying for them. God, why? And I remember after going through the whole process, since we're doing this decade challenge, this is the one thing that I remember the most that God will ever speak to me. He says, Jake, I want you to know that I trust you now with what I'm about to give you. I'm not saying that I had to go through that to get that. What I'm saying is I needed a mental transformation. God needed to change my mind. And praise God, I look back at that and go, thank God. I mean, all the pieces lined up. I mean, I look at that now and go, Jesus, you're amazing how you work that stuff out. To find a kidney donor, perfect match. That's powerful, that's awesome. To find all these things take place and I say, okay, God, but still why? He says, Jake, if there's anything you get out of this, it's because I want you to know, like Job, that I trust you and I knew that you'd never turn your back on me. I said, thank you, God. Thank you, God. See, this year in 2020, we're going to expel the lies of the devil and bring back the identity of the gospel amongst all people. Amongst all people. Everyone who steps foot through this door is going to understand who Christ is inside of them. Everybody who comes to this door, every single person, Trust me, church, 2020, you're going to be really challenged. You're going to have to step outside your box and comfort zone of what you think it should be like. You guys ready for that? When more of the LGBTQ community begins to come to our church, what are you going to do about that? Will you pick it or will you have arms open wide? Yeah. Oh, get ready because everyone has the opportunity to encounter the love of Jesus. So Everybody does. I thank God for the, for the cultures that we have represented here at the church. I thank God for that. I just want you to know, get ready, because it's going to open wide up. The gates are going to fling wide open. And they may not look, think, smell, whatever like you, whatever like me. And everyone knows that I always smell good. But whatever the case is, we have to be open-armed. We have to receive them like Jesus receives them. Am I saying here today that we're going to put up with all the stuff that happens? No, we're still going to have convictions, but I believe that we can have convictions with love. Yes. Yes. I believe we can have conviction with love. Yes. It's a book idea I'm writing on. Thank God that when I was a sinner and I was messed up and when I had stuff going on in my life, when I was running away from God, thank God Thank you, Jesus, that he didn't give up on me. Thank you, Jesus, that he was on the right hand of the Father praying for somebody to be loving enough to reach out to me. You hear what, I'm just, you hear what I just said? 
God right now is praying for you to be that person for someone else. To love them, to reach them, to extend your arms of love and grace to them, to be the reflection of who Christ is here on earth. Salvation 2020. Salvation 2020. This year in 2020, we will advance his agenda, not mine, or not yours, or not ours. Because of salvation, I now get to partner with the king to display who he is here on earth. The Great Commission is a huge deal. Who, would you agree with that? And it didn't just stop when he, Jesus went to heaven. We can all sit around and talk about what that Great Commission means. But let's not just talk theory. Let's start seeing action. You want to know how to see God begin to break out in the street in your workplace, you gotta take a risk. All you have to do is obey. That's the hardest part. But all you have to do is obey. All we have to do is simply be obedient. Will you guys this morning resolve with me to say that I will be obedient to Christ when he speaks? Will you say yes and amen when it's difficult? Will you say yes and amen when it means you might get embarrassed? Will you say yes and amen when it means that you're going to have to take a risk and believe God for something big for someone else's life? Because if we want to see something happen, we want to see a transformation happen in our city, which our mission statement is simply host his presence, transform the city. We want to see the transformation part of the city. It's going to take you and me at the restaurant going, hey, can I pray with you about something real quick? Not just, I can't believe my waiter is so slow. I'm not going to leave her a tip. I said, get over ourselves a little bit and let's see and ask the Holy Spirit when we go into a place, God, what do you want to do in this restaurant? What do you want to do? Even if it's just one person, that's all it takes. Even if it's just one person. Or better yet, you're with a friend at work and you're constantly working with them and you're talking with them, building relationship with them. At some point, God's going to give you an opportunity to share with him who Jesus is and pray with him. Will you take the opportunity to do so? And let me just break a lie right now. Let me just break a lie right now because I hear the Holy Spirit saying this. It doesn't matter how old you are. You fourth quarter believers are still in the game. You hear what I just said? You don't stop until you get to heaven. God's still counting on you to show, well, I've done my part. What an awful attitude to have. I know. I know what you're saying when you say that. And when people say that, I get it. Right? I, I understand that. But God still wants to use you. God still wants to speak through you. God still wants to touch you. God still wants to minister through you and to you. God still wants to, to, to begin to light the fire under your feet so you can see the kingdom of God advance in every area of your life. We break another lie for you. I don't know enough. Neither did disciples jump on board. I know how to fish, so did they. I know how, to, that's all I know. Doesn't matter. God's not asking you to know enough. He's just asking you to be available. Number three, and the last one. This year in 2020, let me just say this real quick. My destination is heaven, amen? My destiny is bringing heaven to earth. My destination is heaven. My destiny is bringing heaven to earth. Last one. This year in 2020, we will see those who do not know Jesus and those who have fallen away come to know his loving arms again. They come to know his loving arms again. They may not ever attend church again. That's not what I'm asking. We're asking them to have an encounter with God because God can do anything. He can do anything. Are you praying for it? Are you believing for it? So a few ways we're going to accomplish this task. Number one, I encourage you to grab some salvation poem cards. Out here in the front entry, you'll see them. Blue and yellow. 
little stands. Grab those little cards. On the back of those cards is a salvation prayer. All you got to do is share it with somebody and ask them if that means anything to them, if they'd like to pray with you. Bring people to church. This is a great place to have the gospel introduced to you, amen? Bring people to church, just don't invite them. Bring them. It might mean you gotta pick them up early for breakfast. Hey, let's go get a muffin at Perkins, and then let's go to church. And then while you're at Perkins, remember Pastor Jake. And the last thing is pray, believe, and expect God to do what we're asking him to do. Don't, ha- don't lose faith. Don't lose hope on what we're praying and believing for. So with that said, to close out today, I would like for you to think right now of one person this year that you know needs to know Jesus this year. Maybe they were once at church. Maybe they were once in the kingdom and they're not anymore. Maybe they once believed God, but things have gotten a little weary. Or maybe it's somebody who just does not know who Christ is at all. They know about church, but they don't know Jesus. They know about him, but they don't know him. I want you to think about that person right now. You got it? You got it. This is everybody. This is everyone. Even if it's your first time here, this is everyone. So there's two things we're going to do. Number one, we're going to whisper their name. And then we're going to write it down on a piece of paper. And I want you to come to prayer tonight. And I want you to bring that name and I want you to drop it at the altar. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a salvation wall at the end of the month. We're going to put the wall over there. We're going to put all the names on there. And when those people get saved, we're going to erase the name. And we're going to say, thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I love you with all my heart. I thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. And Father, right now, I pray for, now just say lightly say that person's name. I pray for, for them to have an encounter with you, Jesus, more than anything, God, I want them to know you. This year, we believe the year of salvation is upon us. God, we honor you and we bless you.